In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The simple fact is that we probably wouldn't be here celebrating Easter Sunday today if it wasn't for the testimony of women. All the Gospels are unanimous that it is women who first go to the tomb where Jesus had been buried and discovered that it is empty. The stone covering the entrance has been rolled away, the grave clothes are folded up, and the body is gone. To this day, the alternative story is that grave robbers have staged a hoax to falsely vindicate the claims that Jesus was the Messiah. The problem is that if that story were true, they simply didn't do a very good job. The story the women tell, however, is different. Mary Magdalene becomes the apostle to the apostles, the one who is sent to those who will be sent. She is the first witness to the resurrection, and her proclamation, I have seen the Lord, begins a wave that ripples through history. However, this claim was resolutely countercultural. In a world where women weren't even allowed to testify in court because society considered that a woman's word wasn't to be trusted, the early Christians based their crucial claim on the voices of women. These women were their witnesses, and presumably then, as now, they were instantly dismissed. Even now, in 2021, we can unfortunately still readily call to mind those who are still not listening to what women are saying. Over the last few weeks, we have seen women and men stand up and shout their protests on how women are treated in the workplace. They have decried injustice and the double standards applied depending on someone's position and influence. Christian churches have joined in their cry for justice and equality, although church groups are not immune from this problem. Quite the opposite, in fact. There are voices around this country who mask misogyny with religion and are nothing less than the promulgators of hate speech and oppression. Those who fundamentally see women as a little less equal and a little less human than men. It's not enough to say that things have changed. It's not enough to say that Christianity has had an enormous impact on the lives and rights of women compared to what came before. That may be true, but my goodness, it's quite literally taken thousands of years for women to be even considered by some as equal to men. Yet despite all the language of the equality of women and men in the New Testament, and that all are made one in Christ, Christians around the Mediterranean in those early centuries soon adopted and accepted the attitudes of the surrounding culture, and even defended them. Even in some of the books of scriptures, which were amongst the last to be written, chronologically speaking, we see this trend setting in. So I say again, it's not enough to say that things have changed, or, they used to, or they're better than they used to be, when there is still so much to be done and so many hearts and minds that need to be transformed. With that, we have Christ leading us into transformation. It's what we celebrate this Easter Sunday. The resurrected Jesus, who comes to us on Easter Day as the first fruits of the new creation, a new creation that is transforming all of creation and ushering in the reign of God. And Christians, who are called to be ambassadors of that kingdom, should be at the forefront of all that God is transforming. 
If we were to believe that the future that God is leading us into is one in which women are to be oppressed and their voices ignored, one has to ask why you think that is good news for half the human race. It is women who become the first witnesses to the resurrection. Women who become the first messengers of the new creation that is born in the empty tomb. The Gospels highlight the enormous importance that women have in the years of Jesus' ministry, and later writings give evidence of their roles as leaders in the early church. When all the men run away and abandon, it is women who stay with Jesus when he is crucified, with the exception of the Apostle John, who suddenly shows up with Jesus' mother at the cross. In John's account of the resurrection, this account that Christians all around the world read every year on Easter Sunday, in this account, Mary Magdalene is the central figure. Those who ignore the voices of women or treat women as lesser beings will never be able to hear the message of the resurrection. And if you want to understand this passage, you have to let go of all the conspiracy theories and Dan Brown's ideas about Mary Magdalene. Here in John's account of the resurrection, Mary's story is our eyes and ears in the garden. She is us. We are her, in a sense. She is the example that is placed in front of us. Her longing and grief as one who watched Jesus die on the cross and now cannot find him should be matched by our own who have heard this story right the way through in John's account. She is an example to us. Her longing for Christ should be our longing for Christ. Now, she is held up as an example to us, but that doesn't mean that she's placed on some sort of idealistic pedestal. When Mary Magdalene, through her tears, confronts what she mistakes to be the gardener, she says essentially that if the con is on, she'll buy in so long as she can be with Jesus. She's prepared to take the body away. And here, this apparent gardener, who is the resurrected Jesus, essentially pulls her up. It's hard to convey tone in the gospel narratives, but this is like a stern parent saying the name of their child to pull them up. Jesus says to her, Mary, exclamation mark. It's then that she recognises Jesus and all the rest falls away. Jesus tells Mary not to hold on to him. In the resurrection, Jesus' relationship with Mary and all the disciples has changed, and for that matter, changed absolutely everything for all time. Whatever they might have thought about him before, standing now before the resurrected Jesus changes everything. And so Jesus tells Mary not to hold on to him. She and the disciples can no longer hold on to their past notions of who Jesus was or their past notions of what it meant to be a follower of Jesus. Everything is being transformed by God and they are now heralds of something new. Jesus gives Mary a mission. And so, as I said before, she becomes the apostle to the apostles. She must go tell what she has seen and heard. Mary's transformation and mission is the same for every follower of Christ, male and female. Like Mary, searching intensely for Jesus in the garden, we are called to seek Jesus intensely. With, and with great love, 
allowing him to possess our hearts and change our lives. Like Mary Magdalene, all of Jesus' disciples are given a mission. Mary's mission is the mission of the church and all Christians in the world. To bear witness to the reality of the risen Jesus and the transforming power of his love that is available to all who seek it. The only way in which Christians can carry out this mission is if our lives are first grounded in a personal encounter with the risen Lord and with the grace of the Holy Spirit. That relationship can transform everything. How we think, how we act, and how we think about and treat others. This relationship in which we come to know that in Christ, who declares that he comes to make all things new, in Christ there is neither Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for all are one in Christ. A thriving relationship of faith, hope and love in the living and ever-present Lord is the firm ground of the real Christian life. It is this which enables us to give witness to the new light of Easter Day and say with St. Mary Magdalene, I have seen the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.